so quick. Yeah, that really was quick. Usually we sit here for a while. I'm waiting for YouTube to catch up so I can mute it. Oh, but you there can put go. your live comments on StreamYard in here. I, I just always use the, the YouTube oh, chat okay. anyway, because the okay. chat on StreamYard is a little laggy. Oh, okay. I mean, not like it doesn't really matter. Like, It's not like that bad. Yeah. yeah so. Hello, anyone and everyone. All two of us. It's probably just me and you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Cassie. You're on my channel. Hi, I'm Cassie. I'm Chelsea. I'm hanging out on Cassie's channel. Yeah. Uh, we're a little late today. Sorry. We just like fucking. It's Friday after a long ass week. Yeah, for me. <laughs> it was a rough. It was a rough week for me, and I think for Chelsea too, if I heard correctly. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's been yeah. a time. But we are here. Oh, here they are. So professional. To discuss this hard stopper volume one and two. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait. Uh, yes. And our next September read, I can't remember the name of it because there's so many words. It's called Tell Me How You Really Feel by Amina May Safi. It is female, female, hate to love YA romance set in Southern California. What's not to love? Right. Hi, Neville Yungi. Hi, Neville. Yeah, so that's going to be our September one. And I think we picked a live show date. Do you have it memorized off the top of your head or should I look it up? I'm pretty sure it's Friday the 4th of October at 7 p.m. PST. Yeah, that's um, great. Because the last week of September is the contemporary -thon and I don't want to have a live show on top of vlogs. So. Yeah, and another, you guys are doing a live show during that week. Yeah, and it's the day after what would have been our live show. Yeah. So it's just like, it's too much. Too much. Too many live shows in a, in a week. Anyway. Yeah. And then on top of a readathon, no thanks. <laughs> yeah, it took a lot. I still haven't even started looking at my TBR for contemporary -thon, and I need to because I have a couple other videos happening this month that I need I to. maybe just filmed my contemporary on TBR. Ooh, you'll have to tell me what's on it after we get off. Just yeah, because well, I know. the one that you do know about is Bad Romance because we were talking about it during the live show. Right, 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 right. And then our um, our book of the month is also on there for Sassy Book Club. But that's all I'll say. Got it. Let me, I forgot that we already said we were going to buddy read that. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. I want to. No, no, no. I do want to. I just okay. forgot, and I'm glad you mentioned it because it would have completely slipped my mind. It's just such a pretty book, too, although I'm pretty sure it's, like, a rough story. Yeah, it's about um, domestic abuse. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Um, but that's not the books we're talking about in this live show. We're talking about these ones. Yeah, sure. So, we're just here to chat. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like, this will probably be a pretty short live show, and let's be real, the Sassy Book Club never stays on topic, so. Ever. But let's discuss Heartstopper. Yeah. Uh, we'll start with, we'll just talk about volume one kind of right now, okay. um, because spoilers and shit. Uh, volume one of Heartstopper follows main characters Nick and Charlie. Uh, they both go to the same school. Nick is... Older than which one's Charlie? Yeah. Which one's Nick? Yeah, Nick, Nick is, is older. Nick is older than Charlie, uh, and Charlie gets bullied a little bit. Um, In and the year before the story starts, yeah, and God, I don't even know what I'm saying. Basically, it's cute and it's queer, and I love it a lot. Yeah, it, it starts out like knowing that Charlie is gay and he's out and he's been bullied for it, and he has a crush on Nick who he, like, has a class with for something. I don't remember what, even though they're in different grades. But, like, everyone knows that Nick is straight. So he, he in, including himself, is like, this is a bad idea to have a crush on this guy. Like, I need to calm down. But then, of course, it's a romance. So somebody was wrong. This book follows their courtship and their friendship. And it's adorable. And there's a cute dog. And there's sharing of sweaters and it's just adorable yeah the graphic novel is in black and white that's like my one thing where i don't read a lot of graphic novels so graphic novels tend to be kind of hard for me just because i find myself like not 
able to truly invest in a graphic novel story. Like I don't get very invested in the characters. Mm -hmm. And this one, like for a graphic novel for me was a five star. Both of them were for me, but it still holds that like, it's a graphic novel. I don't know. Like I just, I can't connect to them. Except uh -oh. Saga, that's like the one where I'm like, I am invested in these characters. I care. But like any other graphic novel, I'm like, okay. Like Saga I is truly like above and beyond everything. Um, but I, um, it's no secret, I'm a huge graphic novel fan. I love them. I will agree that it's harder to connect. And a lot of the times, like, I'll read a ton of graphic novels and I'll love it when I read it. And then within like a couple days, I'll forget a lot of stuff about it because it's you spend so little time with it yeah but i think that because like this is what i reread this one now um it made it easier for me to kind of like fall back into it i guess yeah and i just well, really love these characters a lot what? also i love alice's art style yeah it's super cute it's like so it reminds me of doug do you remember Doug? Yeah, it does remind me a little of Doug. It reminds me of Doug a lot. I just love, I can't wait to collect them all. Yeah. I think she said there's going to be six. Really? Or I maybe think... six chapters. Maybe there will be five books because book one is chapters one and two. And then okay. book, book two is chapter three. Yeah. Also, this StreamYard thing, just to like completely go onto the topic of live showing on YouTube now that YouTube changed their shit. Um, this is hard for me because it's not mirrored. <laughs> oh. It's such a struggle. I'm like, where am I? <laughs> I just really, do you have the premium one? I don't know. Because no. there's no um, watermark. There's usually a watermark. Oh, I think I do for like, I think I signed up for a free, free trial or whatever. Trial, whatever. Because it, it, if I remember correctly, it offered me a free trial it like signed me up for a free trial for the first whatever days, and I'm still in that. So it says beta on my stuff. God. Oh, my hair's wild, and we're just gonna ignore it. I just know that it said when I signed up, this is not related to Heartstopper, but when I <laughs> first signed up for StreamYard, it was like, uh, you should do the premium one because it's unlimited. And I was like, oh shit. So the free one is a limited number of live shows, and I've already done four. And I'm just like, I wonder what they're going to cap per month or limited in life. I think it's per month, but it wasn't super clear. So I don't know. And how much is premium? Did I it think it's like $30 a month. I'm not paying I, I know, but like, what are we going to do? Dude. And I've done four work. live shows in the last two weeks. Yeah, I don't know. YouTube, get your shit together, is what I'm saying. This I mean, should not be a privilege. This should be a part of your service. Yeah, I have a feeling that they'll figure it out eventually. Um, but whatever. Like that's more. not that interesting, I guess. Yeah, that's a whole other thing. Yeah. Um, so these were really cute, basically. I yeah, just sorry. I don't it, even know what just, else to say. It's so hard to talk about it because I don't want to spoil anything. And also, like, it's just... Like, it's so, they're so short. Like, this was yeah. total, like, an hour's worth of, maybe, like, an hour and a half, if you really yeah. take the time. It's just, they're so good, though. Yeah. I will say, okay, so I will say, I'm going to go, okay, I'm going to warn for spoilers, just in case, like, you guys don't want anything. Um. So, like, if you don't, if you haven't read them yet, go away. And I don't really know, this is more of just, like, a thing with the whole two books, but it's not specific to book two or anything. But it's like, both of these books, I was expecting it to be harder for the characters. Like, it was so it was so nice and fluffy and cute, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But it, like, I almost, I was, like, expecting it to, like, get worse or, like, get hard. And it never really, like, got hard. Like, I, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I do get what you're saying. I, I don't know if it's a complaint, even. I'm just commenting on it. I think um, just from what I've read, um, which is only very little more than you, because I accidentally read ahead, um, because I was reading it on Tapas instead of my physical copies, because right. old lady eyes. Um, but I feel like that's intentional. I feel like she... Like, Alice wants to write something happy. Yes. 
you know? Yeah. And I feel like that's a choice. Oh, absolutely. It definitely feels like a choice. It felt like it's the, cause so often when we get an LGBTQIA plus story, it is hard and it yeah. hurts and it's painful in one way or another, whether and that's between the relationship or between the parents or whatever. And this one, like, other than some 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 outside forces, no one that really mattered made the main characters hurt. Yeah. And it's not that I didn't like it. That's what I that's why I like prefaced it with that at the very end. Like I didn't dislike that it was so easy, but it just it was so easy. I think I was expecting to, I was like reading the book going like, when is it going to hurt me? Like I'm scared and it never happened. So like that anticipation. Um, have you read anything else by Alice Oseman? I can't remember. I Do don't you? think I have. I Radio have, Silence. I Radio Silence, but I don't, I haven't read it yet. Okay. Um, I haven't read Solitaire, which I know is the, the books that these are related to. Um, from reading Radio Silence. I can 100% say um, Alice Oseman can write a fucking sad, heartbreaking book. Um, so I really think that this is her, like, passion project. Like, yeah. her, like... Just, but she's a happy little... But, I mean, there is also, like, some things that have been a little bit teased in this one, I think. Or maybe they haven't been teased yet. I can't remember what... Dang it. What was then and what wasn't. But, like, there's... there's like... Charlie has some things that are going to be coming up soon that I think are going to be... Okay. Cause like, there are th like like I said. I mean, I, okay. I already warned for spoilers, so we can get like into what happens in these books. Yeah. Like you know, obviously the things that happen with um, is it Ben? Is that yeah. the character's name? So like that stuff was rough. Like where he, especially that scene that um, Nick walks in, and Ben is like being an asshole mm -hmm. to Ben, and like almost almost like sexually assaulting him. It's like getting close to that moment where it feels like that could be where it was leading, but Nick Nick stops. Hi, Dot. She's hanging out. So cute. Oh my God, today I took a picture of Padfoot sitting, laying in my box for my microphone. And I was like. <laughs> Crap so, bombs forever. Yeah. I'm just breaking apart a phone case while I'm fucking with like. <laughs> While we're here, just to have fun, something to do fun. with my hands. Just girly things. This is a, a $50 Apple iPhone case. It's fine. Just Why ripping it apart. This? Well, because it was ripping in the corner, so I bought a new case. And so oh. now I'm just, like, literally peeling it apart because it's satisfying. Wait, I just always have to have something to do with my hands. Huh? What is it, like, made of that's letting it... It's, be? like, silicone on the outside and then, like, just a plastic case inside. Oh. And it started to peel up. That's why I bought a new phone case. Yeah. And so now I'm just, like, hella taking it off. Yeah. Is it one of those ones that's supposed to help with, like, shatter resistance? Stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, like, that was the hardest thing that, like, that happened. But, again, with the, like, my conversation about graphic novels, it's just, like, hard for me to connect with it. Like, I mean, obviously I read it, and I'm like, oh, that's – that would be really hard to go through. But it happened in, like, two minutes because – I don't know. I still gave them five stars, though. They're super cute. Yeah, I love them. And there's a bunch of parts where, like, if I could just take this panel and rip it out and put it on my wall, I would. I love that. Are the ones reading on top of us, are they colored? No. Alice Oseman has talked about... Um, she made a choice to not color in the graphic novel because she gets um, really, like, finicky with it. And, like, if it's not perfect, she'll, like, she just wouldn't have enough time. Like, because she updates Tapas, I think, is it twice, once or twice a week? Oh, okay. But, like, only with, like, two or three pages, you know? Oh. Um, but she just, like, wouldn't, like, she would never have enough. Yeah. Yeah. She would get too specific about the colors. That makes yeah. sense. I was just wondering if, like... Is there a place where I'm missing the color? Although you could, if you read on top of us, she does have like bonus comics. Uh -huh. And those are in color. Oh, like the little ones? Yeah, like for every, like for a while she was doing like every new 250 supporter she had, she would do like a mini comic. Mm. Now she's gotten a little too big to do that. So she just does them like Whatever. every so often. Or she also commissions other people to do them. 
Oh, cool. Yeah, and she'll feature other people's like stories. Cute. With like it's the same characters, but in yeah, other people's like style. fan fiction. Yeah, that's and, cute. Yeah, it's cute. I I definitely like reading these. Makes me feel like I like Alice Oseman as a person. Is that uh, weird? You should watch her YouTube channel. She has one. She makes view, uh, videos very rarely, but every time she finishes a, or her book gets published, she'll make a like a long spoilery video answering all the questions about the book and like she's really cute and her like editing style is really cute and she's real like i love her videos okay i'm going and subscribing hold on alice oseman okay it also <laughs> she's my age yeah i think she actually might be younger than us no she it said well okay when one of these books was published. She was 26. She's born in 1994, so she's a year younger than us. Yeah. I'm a bitter Betty. <laughs> yeah, she's... Well, she published her first novel, Solitaire, um, which is Charlie and Nick are in Solitaire. Yeah. Um, I think she was 19. Maybe not even 19, maybe 18. Yeah. No. No, just not allowed in the world. Stop. And now Heartstopper is becoming a TV show, and she's helping write that. Shut up! <laughs> you didn't know that either. No, I didn't know anything. I mean, I knew I didn't know she was young until I finished reading Heartstopper Volume One, and I read the um, author's note because I hadn't that I know of. I haven't read anything by her, so I I definitely always read the author's note when it's a new author to me. And it says she was born in 1994 in Kent, England, and is a full-time writer and illustrator. And I was like, wow, what a life. And she's also got a great Instagram. You should follow both her regular Instagram and her art Instagram. Okay. She's great. great. I'm a really big Alice Oseman fan. She, uh, she's I, a great person. You should watch her videos. She's so fucking cool. Okay. Um, I love her book, I Was Born for This. It's very boy bandy, um, and it means a lot to me. That's the one that's like, I it's, I know exactly which one that is. I'm it's bright sure. orange. Yeah. And like, it was, a lot of people were saying like, if you're a One Direction fan, then you'll probably really love this book. Yeah. yeah the, the band in the book is called The Ark. Okay. I followed both of Alice Oseman's accounts. So. Good move. Neville said he likes or they like how the story is conveyed with minimal text. Sometimes I get overwhelmed with graphic novels when there are massive speech bubbles and paragraphs of text. I 100% agree. I just recently DNF'd a graphic novel because it was just, if I want to read that much text, I'll read a novel. Like, mm -hmm. I'm reading a graphic novel because I want dialogue. You know, like, I don't want you to set the scene in a dialogue bubble, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I can see the scene. It's stupid. Yeah, that makes sense. I can see that. I just recently read a graphic novel that I absolutely hated and put down after reading, like, I don't what was know. it? It was, like, half of it. It was The Boys, which is now an Amazon Prime TV show, which I absolutely oh, yeah. freaking loved. Oh, dude, I started that last night. So good. Watch the whole thing. Do not read the graphic novel. <laughs> I love Carl Urban, so I was just like, Oh, Sorry. it's so good. Like, so we we watched the entirety of the season one show, me and Matt. Um, like, I mean, we essentially binged it, but, like, me and Matt never see each other, so it took us, like, <laughs> are we going to have to do that? But, like, any time that we had time to sit down and watch it, that's what we were watching. And it was so good. Like, I loved every minute of that show. It's about, for those of you watching and you haven't seen it yet, The Boys is about this like alternate reality where superheroes exist and they're like people Asshole. know about them that they're like a thing and there's this like private company that manages them so to speak and it's about the corruption within that and it's super gory to set the scene the first thing that you basically watch in the show is our main character that i can't remember his name do you know his name no, yeah. I don't know his name. Huey. 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 And his girlfriend. What's her face? They're like walking down the street and being all cute and adorable because they're boyfriend and girlfriend. Blah, 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 blah. 
And they're like standing and holding hands. And one of the superheroes runs through the girlfriend and destroys her, like her body. And Huey is left holding her hands that have been ripped off the body that was just destroyed. And that's how the story starts. So it's like about these like horrifying things that are being covered up by these like superheroes. So I loved the story. I loved the show. The art was great and I found out it was a graphic novel. So I picked it up and you've watched the show or you watched an episode. Yeah, what episode? You can kind of feel how like, this could be really misogynistic, but it's not getting, it's not there. It's not misogynistic. I felt like throughout the whole show, it was like teetering. It, it was doing it just right. Like where you didn't quite feel, they, they did it just perfectly. The, like story, the naked guy? The graphic novel is everything that shouldn't be in there in regards to like misogynist, sexist bullshit. Ugh. It was just, it was, it was rampant. And I was just like, I can't, I can't. There's an, there's a whole panel of graphic novel where there's an English bulldog that doesn't exist in the TV show that belongs to that main guy, the, the British slash Australian one. Anyway, there's this bulldog that he tells the bulldog to go fuck someone. And the bulldog goes, and rapes someone? What? Why did we need that in a show? It didn't need it at all. I didn't. I didn't want it. I didn't need it. It was not necessary. That's so. gross. It was. It was nasty. I don't recommend the graphic novel. But the show took all of those and like brought it just to the part where in 2019 you can get away with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, not to change the subject oh, even yeah. more f- far away from Heartstopper, but you mentioned Amazon Prime. Have you watched Fleabag? No. Fuck. Oh my god. I can't decide if you would like Fleabag or not, but I'm obsessed. I've been to the whole, both seasons in one day, and it's done. Like, that's so good. What is it? It's... Help. Um, it's kind of like a one-woman comedy show, but okay. it's it's dark. And it's about this woman. Her name is like she. Doesn't, we don't know her name. She refers to herself as Fleabag. Um, and it's about her and her sister and their dad. And it's about how she's coping with the death of her best friend uh, and how she's like trying to date. But it's like it's twelve episodes total, the whole show. Um, okay. And the second season introduces a hot priest. And I'm lit aflame. <laughs> I know that you like a hot priest. I just watched yeah. that video you posted. <laughs> but like, I, he's not traditionally hot. Like, if you were to just see him, like, if I showed you a picture of him, you'd be like, that guy is who you're talking about? And I'd be like, <laughs> fucking yes, that's who I'm talking about. Oh, my God. Um, okay, I'll have to try it this weekend before Matt gets home. Yeah, I don't, from, the, like, what I know of Matt, I don't think it would be a Matt no. show. Although Aldo watched the whole thing with me. so Yeah, but Matt and Aldo, although they have a lot in common, they also have a lot not in common. <laughs> oh, did you watch Sherlock? I've seen I've seen all that used to be out, but I don't know if something new came out. He's Moriarty from Sherlock. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. No, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> watch the show. <laughs> Try, like... I, trust me. I was like, I swooned for days. That's all I could think about. I was watching like compilation videos on oh, YouTube, like yeah. of all the best scenes from the show, and I rewatched the best episodes. It okay. Just, it, all right. The it sucks because you have to. He's not in the show until season two. Okay. Uh, it's only fucking. It's they're like thirty-five minute episodes. Okay. So it's like. I binged the whole thing in one evening. Yeah. Um, well, I've been watching Shameless recently. <sighs> Again. Emmy Rossum. Dude, she's so hot. I have never watched that show. I need to. I Emmy. love her. I will say that, like, that sh- this show, I'm. it's literally on on my TV right now. Like, paused. This show is one of those shows where, like, 
you're either gonna watch it and be like, this is disgusting and I'm never seeing another episode, or you're gonna watch it and you're gonna love it. And like, there's also certain seasons that I hate versus, or like, dislike what it's talking about more than others, I guess. Cause like the whole show's all fucked up. Like, anything that needs a trigger warning uh-huh. is in the show. Like, well, I know Aldo likes the show. Okay. So, yeah. He and like, would be down I, to I, knowing you, like, I feel like for the most part, you would like it. There's a couple, I know you don't love the mom stuff, the hard mom stuff. And there's probably a couple seasons that are would be harder for you than I other. feel like in it's weird in TV and movies and shit. It's fine. Like it doesn't because okay. uh, it's weird TV movies to me. That's media. It's fine. It's whatever. But mm-hmm. books because it's like in your head. I guess a little more. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, it's harder like, for me. at least for me, I tend to unless the the description of the character is very much not my personality or my physical traits. I tend to just put myself in the story and I'm like, yeah. And so like, I would, I do that with all of the characters too. So I feel like if it's a hard, if it's a story that you connect with really well anyway, and then you're also reading about it and doing that, then it would be really hard. Neville said, Shameless is amazing, but some seasons aren't as great. Yeah, I'm currently in season four. Season four is my least favorite season. and I'm real ready for it to be over. So I can keep going. Uh, well, since we're on the, sh- ep- the topic of TV shows, have you watched Mindhunter yet? No, but we want, we'll probably do it this weekend. Although Bake Off is back. So that's Big more what? Important. Great British Bake Off. Is that? Up today. Oh, shit. Yeah. Is it on Netflix? Yeah. Oh, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, so that's probably what we're gonna do. And like, I mean, I'm excited for the smutathon and all. But if I didn't have the smutathon, I would be starting it as soon as we're done here. Yeah, <laughs> that's I feel what's gonna end up happening. Oh, I've been waiting, like, because we started watching it last year, right before season two came out. Um, so we watched all of season one, and then like the next week, season two came out. And we're like, fuck yeah! And then we're like, we have to wait now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, I watched. Whatever, are there only two seasons out of it? Yeah, but there's, like, all over YouTube you can find other shit. Or, like, there's also, um, like, the Great British Baking Show is yeah. the American version of Great British Bake Off because of, like, copyright. Like, oh, you can okay. find Great British Bake Off episodes. I've never watched the American version. I've only oh, well, watched... Well, you only really watched the ones on Netflix? Yeah. Oh. Those are, that's the American one. It's okay. just retitled, though, is what I'm saying. It's oh, still, okay. yeah, yeah, it's still the same show. Got it. Okay, so I watched all of the entirety of everything that's on Netflix in a weekend <laughs> with my sister. <laughs> After she had already watched the entirety of everything that was on Netflix. And then she was like, have you watched The Great British Baking Show? I'm like, no. And then we watched the whole thing together. It's so good. It's so I good. cried like a baby at the end of season two why is it so emotional it was so good i'm like i follow a bunch of them on instagram now and they're all still friends and they hang out all the time and i'm like "Ah." although some of them were freaking freaking annoying but like who's your favorite okay so the first season the older lady one and then the second season the younger girl one wait uh i think you're wrong on both fronts but also no spoilers, girl. Well, I, was I think you're. I think you're wrong. Like, actually, there's like twelve each of both characters that I just named. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I don't remember. We can talk about that after. But it's the best show ever, and I'm so glad it's back. And I love Noel and Sandy so much. So good. Are the same um, judges also on? I'm sure it's still Paul and Prue, but. <laughs> Um, cause I, I love what's her yeah. face with her gin and tonics or whatever the hell she drinks. Oh yeah. It's just, just an alcoholic. <laughs> like, let me be you in my future. <laughs> One day. <laughs> with her sassy glasses. Yeah. <laughs> and then, okay. So on top of that, talking about Brit- baking shows, I was watching not cupcake wars, but cake wars. 
okay. around the same time. So sometimes they come together and like get confused. Okay, the Cake Wars has a host, as all shows do. And I was staring at the host. It's a dude. It's a white dude. He's got short hair, brown hair, very normal. What? I'm looking at him I'm like, what the fuck is he in? Where did he come from? Because I recognize his face. And so finally, I like was staring at him for an ep- a total of like two episodes. Finally looked it up on IMDb. It's freaking Aaron from Mean Girls. It's the love interest. How the fuck did I know that's what you were going to say? I have no <laughs> idea what show you're talking about. Why is that in what? <laughs> I feel like I've talked about it, honestly. You on- may, because it, why the fuck oh, did I, I know that? Yeah, I had to have talked about it because when I was when I was in the throes of Cake Wars, I was like, it's freaking Aaron. <laughs> Did I tell you um, that I saw him on my street a couple months ago? No, you didn't. Yeah, they were filming something. He, it was like they had like the tent set up and like the food truck set yeah. up. And he was just like there at craft services. And I was like, it's Aaron Samuels. <laughs> yeah. Why are you doing here? That's so weird. What even is, like, what is his life like? Because he's not famous anymore, but, like, he's still the Mean Girls guy. I wonder if he gets a lot of dudes because of it. I bet he does. Probably. There was just recently a filming thing happening near where I live. We, like, went to dinner downtown. And I don't know if they were filming or doing, like, a photo shoot. Uh Uh-huh. It was fancy, and there was, like, cops everywhere, and like a fancy car that they were taking pictures in. And I was like, this is weird. I don't live actually in LA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I'm more used to it. Sorry, hold on. Oh my God, yes. I had the same exact reaction watching the show. Yes, see Neville, you feel me because it was hard for me. <laughs> <sighs> Well, we're not even talking about fucking Heart Stopper. This live show is a mess. It's our brand. That's what we, we're boozy. That's what happened. This is definitely my second glass of wine, not my first. Love that for you. <laughs> yeah, um, I think it's, it would be a good time. But yeah, I mean, we don't have anything else positive to say. But these are different dimensions slightly. Are they? Very, well, because mine, I pledged the Kickstarter. Oh. So I have the one with the French flaps. Nice. Does yours have that? No. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. It was like, yeah. <laughs> I paid like $60 for it. But I was supporting and like I got goodies. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Six drink? Mint Yungi, you doing it. I can tell how far back it is now because I just got, I'm on my sixth drink. I love that. Oh, because <laughs> I was like, what now? Six drink thing. We love that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So as a reminder, September, we're reading, say it again. Cause there's tell me how you really feel by Amina May Safi. The live show will be on my channel on Friday, October 4th at 7 p.m. PST. And we hope to see you there. It'll hopefully be a little better than this one. It's just weird. Cause like, what can you even say about graphic novels? It was great. Yeah. Was great. They're super cute. Like also these graphic novels in particular, because like they feel very much like slice of life stories. Like there's not really a lot of plot. It's just about Nick and Charlie being cute. True. And like their families accepting them. Yay! Like awesome. We love that. We're not complaining. Whenever I hear awesome, I just think of um, Bring It On. The yeah. cheer in the beginning. Oh, wow. Like totally freak me out. I mean, right now. Wait, right on. Oh, oh God. Oh, sure. We need, one. We need to leave. We need to leave. <laughs> okay that's it for this live show thank you for joining make sure to hit subscribe on my channel if you haven't already i'm not normally this much of a mess and Chelsea is also linked down below as well as all of the information we just spewed at you for next month next month it'll be on chelsea's channel so again go subscribe uh contemporary a-thon is happening chelsea's a host for that 
I'll be participating and doing live, uh, not live shows, um, vlogs for that. That's coming up. Cassie Yay. and our buddy reading a book for that. We're buddy reading a book for that. Yay. Love that for us. <laughs> yes. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for coming. Bye, Bye Yungi. Did you end it? Are we just?